In this presentation, we will introduce if functions in Excel using an example from the dice game Yahtzee. In each round of Yahtzee, a player rolls five dice and scores them in various ways. The scoring categories are broken up into two sections. In the game's upper section, there are six ways to score. In the ones category, one sums up the number of ones rolled. In the twos category, one sums up the number of two rolled, and so on. By the end of the game, each scoring category should be used once and only once. One subtotals the scores in the upper section. And then, if that score is 63 or higher, one receives a bonus of 35 points. So if we are using Excel to help us score the Yahtzee game, we have the scores for the various categories in the upper section. Our next step will be to use Excel to sum those scores for us. So if the scores are in cells B2 through B7, then in B8 we can enter the formula equal sum, open parenthesis, B2, colon, B7, close parenthesis, to get the sum of the scores in the upper section. It is this quantity about which we will be asking a true-false question. Eventually, are we getting the bonus or not? We are now set up to ask the question if we're getting the bonus or not, and so in Excel we will be using the if function. The if function has three arguments. The first is a logical test, and the second two are values. The logical test, also known as a condition, is basically a true or false question. So our question is, is the quantity in B8, which was the sum of the ones through the sixes, is that subtotal greater than or equal to 63? So the question is B8 greater than sign equal than sign 63. So the greater than sign followed by the equal sign corresponds to being greater than or equal to. So 63 will give a true, 64 will give a true, 65 will give a true, anything less than 63 will give a false. The next argument is the value we want, the result we want to be placed in that cell B9 if the condition is true. If it's true, we're getting the bonus, so we want our, our value to be 35, the 35 point bonus. And the third argument is the value we want if the answer is false, and that we're putting in a zero. There is a bonus of zero or no bonus if the condition is false. Here we're showing two different scenarios. In the first scenario, I rolled four sixes and got a score of 24 in the sixth category, and my subtotal was 65, greater than the 63 required to get the bonus, and I got the bonus. In the other scenario, I only rolled three sixes, getting an 18, my subtotal was 59, and I did not receive the bonus. The importance of the if function is that you can use the same formula and get different answers based on the scenario. The first argument of the if function was a logical test, also known as a condition, also known as a comparison. So here we are listing the comparison operators the logical tests that we have available to us. So we can ask if two quantities are equal, if the first quantity A1 is greater than B1, the second quantity, if A1 is less than B1, if A1 is greater than or equal to B1, if A1 is less than or equal to B1, and if A1 is not equal to B1. Here I want to show that you can have calculations within the arguments of the if function. So in our original approach, in, shown in columns A, B, we have the subtotal in row 8, whether or not there's a bonus in row 9, and then add the bonus to the subtotal in row 10. In the second approach, in columns D and E, we are combining those last two steps, determining if there's a bonus and adding it. In this approach, then, our function is equal if, then the question is still E9, that is what holds the subtotal, if E9 is greater than or equal to 63, comma, then the value that we want is now we're doing the totaling, so it'll be 
E9, the subtotal plus the 35 bonus we're getting because it is true that we're greater than or equal to 63. And then the value, if it's false, is just E9, the subtotal. I'm going to push this idea a little bit further to show that all of the arguments in the if function, including the logical test, the first argument, can all involve calculations. So there are three main things going on in our calculation of the upper section uh, total. We were subtotaling the categories ones, twos, up to sixes. We were then asking if that subtotal was greater than or equal to 63 to determine whether or not we got the bonus, and then we were adding in that bonus. So we can do this all in one step if we do calculations within the if function. So this is how that goes. So then there's one cell, this is now in H10, and so we're working in columns G and H now. And so the, the function is equal if, the first argument is the sum from H4 to H9, and we're asking if that's greater than or equal to 63. That's our question. If that's true, if that condition is true, then we want the sum of h4 through h9, and then we want to include the 35-point bonus. So sum h4 colon h9 plus 35. If that condition was false, then we just want the sum of h4 through h9. So all three arguments you can see here involve calculations. It's not that I'm necessarily saying that this is recommended or and I'm just sort of showing you that this is at least possible and then you should work at the level that you feel comfortable. In that last example the sum over the categories ones twos up to sixes occurred three times in each of the arguments of the if function. If you really really want to get fancy then you can name this formula that sums the ones through the sixes. If you wanted to do that, you would go to on the menu formulas and then over to click on define name. And this will allow you to, to give it a name. I called it upper underscore subtotal and then define it the sum of H4 through H9. Then if you want to see what you have named, then you could go to formulas again and the name manager. This will allow you to see any calculations that you've defined. And then you can use that formula in any situation. So you can see it in the formula bar. I am using my function upper subtotal in, in each of the three arguments. I had to be careful about the relative and absolute addressing when I defined my formula. Again, Excel, when we when you move formulas around, it wants to uh, change the cells based on the positioning. And if you don't want that to happen, then you might want to work with absolute addressing. So I, I did that. I added my dollar signs so that the formula when moved around uh, sort of stayed fixed. Now, I'm not necessarily recommending this approach. I am more just making it, you aware of Excel's features and capabilities. Here, I want to show you that the arguments in an if function, in addition to being numbers and calculations involving numbers, can, can have words or what we call strings. So instead of having a bonus of 35 or zero, I'm going to say, yes, you got the bonus or no, you didn't get the bonus. And so that if of whether or not you got the bonus then becomes if open parenthesis B8, which holds the subtotal greater than or equal to 63 comma, and the value if true now is a yes. And then the value if false is a no. And strings go in quotation marks. I can also have a condition that involves, or a logical test that involves a string. And here I'm using equality. So I'm saying if, this is where I'm doing the sub, the, the totaling for the upper section. My, I will have another if, and I will say if B9, that result, that previous result, if it is equal to yes, again with the quotation marks, then the value, if it's true, will be the subtotal B8 plus the bonus of 35, and if the value of it's false will just be B8, the subtotal. So again, this is allowing us to have 
words in the arguments and any of the three arguments. Here I want to warn you about some issues that arise when comparing strings. This first one is that spaces matter. So in cell E2 is the word yes, all capitals, no spaces, just the word yes. So first I ask if E2 is equal to the word yes with no spaces, and I see then it is a match. But if I ask if that word is equal to quote yes space, end quote, I find that it is not a match, that space matters, and it will not match if one of them has a space and the other one does not. Another issue that can matter in string comparison is whether or not the case, the capitalization, whether that matters. So in the first case here, I am asking if the contents of E2, which is capital Y-E-S, if that matches, if that is equal to, quote, Y-E-S with all small letters, and I see that I'm getting a match. So in Excel, it the capitalization does not matter. So capital Y-E-S and small Y-E-S are considered to be equal and matching. So if I want to make that distinction and I don't want them to match, I can add in the word exact. So then I can say equal if, and then I add the exact function, and the exact function will have two arguments, the cell, I'm, I'm using E2 again, and YES. And now with the word exact, they have to exactly match for me to get a true. They don't exactly match, so I will find here a result for of my if of not match. Just one little warning, this is sort of the opposite of most programming languages. Most programming languages will have a default of a case mattering and capitalization mattering, whereas Excel has a default of the case or the capitalization not mattering. I just want to round out this presentation on if with some of the functions Excel has that are related to if or has sort of built in if functionality. The first one I'm going to mention is COUNTIF. If you have some region in your Excel spreadsheet and you want to count the number of times a particular condition was true, then you can use the COUNTIF functionality. Somewhat similar to COUNTIF is the function SUMIF. COUNTIF asked if a condition was true and then counted the number of cells that had the true condition. In some if you are going to have some region in Excel, you're going to ask the question, is some condition true? And then you're going to add up the values in the cells that had a true result. In the if function, we asked a question and then we said what to do if it was true and what to do if it was false. There's a related function called ifs with an S and that allows you to ask multiple questions, sort of follow-up questions, especially if the answer was false. So you would ask one question and say what value you wanted if it was true. And if it was false, instead of giving a value, you would ask a second question. And then you would have a second value for that, for that if that second question were true. And then you might ask a third question if that second question were false, and so on. Recall an if uses a condition, something that evaluates to true or false. The AND function in Excel allows you to combine two conditions and make one condition out of it. And it gives you a true only if both of the component conditions were true. For instance, if you were estimating a, an, an electric bill for a house, you might want to know if it's summer and if the house has central air, and only if both of those things are true, then you might want to have an extra amount added into your estimate of the electric bill. Excel's OR function provides a different way to combine two conditions to make one condition out of it. In this case, one or the other, or even both conditions may be true to get a true, only when both are false does one get a false. 
So again, in our sort of electric bill example, we may be asking if the season is spring or if the season is fall, then we might proceed into a certain calculation. So it would be true if it were spring. If it were spring, it would be true if it were fall. It would only be false if both of these conditions were false. If it was not spring and not fall, then we would get a false for the ORD condition.